You sound Scottish. I am Scottish. What's wrong with that? Scotland's got to be here somewhere. No. They wanted their own ship. Hmm. Good for them. Nothing changes. Doctor Who, quintessentially British. As am I. And in a few days' time, there's a vote in Scotland on the future of the Union. I've lived oh, more than half my life in Canada, but in so many ways, I, I do remain British. Who am I kidding? I still cry at the movie Battle of Britain. I watch every episode of Doctor Who. I adore Branston Pickle. Try it if you haven't. I, I still get up at dawn to see England win the Rugby World Cup. I wear Tattersall shirts, but they won't let them wear, me on air, wear them on air here. It's in the blood, OK? It, it's part of being, uh, being British. And, and part of that is having Scotland as the neighbour to the north. And, and I mean this, the, the neighbour that mocks us as we mock them, that likes nothing more than beating us at sport, because it hardly ever happens. Yet when it matters, when things really matter, we stand as one to fight foreign bullies, to, to build a nation where the weak and the ill are cared for, to preserve a culture where tolerance and humour matter more than race and ideology, where the differences between us make the unity finer and kinder and more vibrant. I, I love the Scots and I love Scotland, and it still really shocks me that a union of more than 300 years could dissolve in it in a few days due to misunderstanding and fantasies, political dishonesty, misplaced nationalism. Look, certain toxins have been pumped into the British bloodstream recently, and I'm deeply concerned at the harm that could be done to the entire body politic. The sensible, logical arguments are obvious. The idea that Scotland has not been properly represented in the Westminster London Parliament, that's absurd. Of Britain's prime ministers of the past 120 years, Gordon Brown, Ramsay MacDonald, uh, Henry Campbell Bannerman, Arthur Balfour, they were all completely Scottish. Andrew Bonalore, born in Canada, actually, but really Scottish. Tony Blair was born in Edinburgh. Uh, Harold Macmillan, Alec Douglas Hume, they were sort of Scottish in, in origin. All of Scotland's MPs, more than 50, are Scottish, but many of England's MPs have been and are Scottish as well. Scotland doesn't lose out financially within the United Kingdom and, if anything, would suffer as a separate entity. Scotland hasn't been colonised and, to an extent, has formed English culture rather than the country. The empire, the armed forces, our faith, the economy, literature was and is at least as Scottish as English, often far more so. The politics and culture of Scotland are different from those of England, but together they form a whole, just as I suppose do... Uh, Fish and chips. They need each other. They, they complete each other, are each other. Scotland's greatness is not brave heart and distorted nostalgia, but the, the 18th century enlightenment populated by numerous philosophers, economists, authors, intellectuals who lived after and not before the union with England. The 19th century saw an economic blossoming in Scotland, once considered impossible, and contemporary Scotland is freer and better than ever. The last words go... To my grandpa, my grandfather, he's, he's gone now and I miss him. He was a down-to-earth Londoner, a senior sergeant in the British Army in Italy in 1944 when a young Lance Corporal from Glasgow died in his arms. Now, my grandpa seldom discussed the war, but once, after quite a few beers, that was not uncommon, he shared this man's final words. Don't leave me, he had said in a thick govern accent. No, replied my grandpa. No, we'll see this one out together. They did. Scotland the brave, England the brave, Great Britain. Good God, it really is worth preserving.